question regarding your table, Axel Vorderrata from RLE. Um, the combustion engine, did that one have a turbocharger? I don't think so. The, 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 you're talking about? The comparison table between average combustion engine, I believe it was an oh. average value, oh. right? Oh, yes. And I believe all those engines that you had in your comparison were non-turbocharged. Non, uh, With the exception that, maybe of the Fiat. Of, right, I was going to say, I believe that is correct except for the Fiat. Um, what we simply did was to look at the power requirements uh, for uh, that vehicle class and then we took our engine concept with all three of our technologies combined, which is our split cycle, our air hybrid, and this new Miller concept. And we said, okay, what, what size engine with all of these three features do we need to match the power requirement of that vehicle class? And it turned out to be only 75 horsepower uh, with a certain torque requirement. And so obviously we were able to downsize. Uh, but the study was not an actual study, it was basically just a simulation. It was an actual simulation, right. Okay. It was not a physical uh, production of an engine in a vehicle, right. Okay. And the Scuderi split cycle engine that you had head to head with the combustion engine, the conventional engine, did have turbocharging and did have the air hybrid concept. No. Our, the engine that we have running down in San Antonio, which has been running since 2009, is the basic split cycle engine. When you look at our technology, the concept of the split cycle is really the most difficult technically. In other words, you had the, there have been split cycle engines around previously. None of them fired after top dead center. And it's this combustion of making the combustion work and work well after top dead center that's really the key to making all the rest of the system work. And the engine that was developed and is running down in San Antonio was really developed to test that combustion process. And it's been, like I said, running since 2009 and running in a very robust manner. For example, uh, when you look at uh, something like a coefficient of variance at very low loads and very low speeds, uh, we maintain a very tight or very small coefficient of variance uh, under those conditions, whereas a conventional engine tends to uh, have a very bad coefficient of variance at that level. And, and so it's those kind of things that we're testing, and it's really focused on the combustion side of the engine. The other technologies, the air hybrid and the Miller, are actually, we consider simpler technologies, but their impact is much, much bigger. But the figures you have shown, did they take the Miller cycle and uh, the air hybrid into account or not? Yes, they did. They did? They did. And you also claimed that it was cost competitive to a conventional naturally aspirated engine. Correct. Although you have added the turbocharger and you have added the air hybrid system. Correct. How come? Because the air hybrid uh, doesn't really add very much cost. It's basically a tank. Uh, the, and a ball. The, the valves and everything else are basically the same. Uh, the Miller uh, gives, you the ben gives you the added cost of a turbocharger, but you downsize the engine significantly. Uh, the, some of the unique features of that, of the, of the Miller, or Scuderi Miller, is that it not only downsizes and increases things like torque and, and efficiency, but it, it, it amazingly keeps all the internal pressures of the engine very low. So you have a unique situation occurring where torque is going up, pressures are low, and efficiency keeps improving as the engine downsizes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, hello, Johannes Koch from Merger Market. Um, I'd just like to know what the timeline is on, on issuing the first licenses. I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Uh, a timeline on issuing uh, first licenses. Oh, um, well, I'd love, to, I'd love to be able to give you the exact timeline as to when we're going to have a first licensee. But what, what's simply happening is the technology is becoming more and more compelling. Uh, and in fact, Lutz mentioned it, but on this particular study, uh, we went very conservative. Uh, the uh, efficiency of the turbocharger has a big impact on the overall performance of our, of our Miller cycle application. Uh, the, we, we stayed uh, very low in the efficiency of the turbo. Uh, we eliminated one of the more advanced features of the air hybrid, which is what we call our firing and charging. So we know that there's going to be significant gains yet to come. And in terms of licensing, uh, the way we kind of look at it is that as the engine gets better and become, the technology becomes more compelling, uh, uh, one of the engine manufacturers are going to make that step. Uh, we are in very high level discussions with a number of them and we think it will be a, a short time uh, before someone actually jumps. Exactly when that is, I can't, I can't really tell you. 
Well, if there's no other questions, I certainly appreciate everyone for coming. Uh, and I invite people to take literature uh, on the front table and uh, visit our booth to actually see our, our model and, and uh, ask more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat>